Hi, my name is Robert Bryan. I'm the ITOM practice manager here at Crossviews. Uh, today, we're here to talk about ServiceNow ITOM and how it can help modernise, automate and optimise your IT. ServiceNow ITOM is broken down into four pillars. We've got ITOM visibility, health, optimization, and governance. Uh, depending on where you are in your maturity, uh, will depend on what uh, application and capability is suitable for you. What we'll talk about in this video is about what that, those applications uh, consist of and those pillars, uh, how that can benefit you and some of the challenges we see in the industry. So today I'm joined by Muthu, one of our ITOM practice rangers. Muthu, can you give a, a background in your experience in ServiceNow? Hi Rob, my name is Muthu Seva Subramanian. I'm one of the principal technical consultants at Crossfuse. I've been in the ServiceNow space since 2014, specializing in ITOM, ITSM, and uh, various integrations. And it's been fun so far. So what is ITOM Visibility and what does it consist of? ITOM Visibility is a product from ServiceNow to uh, discover the infrastructure. Uh, ITOM uh, Visibility products include discovery, service mapping, service craft connectors, uh, certificate inventory and management, firewall audits, and uh, as you get the ITOM visibility, it also includes the CMDB capabilities like CMDB 360 and uh, attestation. Can you give me a little bit more detail about the capabilities and applications that are included in ITOM visibility? Yeah, sure. So, so these products help you try and discover your infrastructure. So basically, the customer infrastructure with this modern age, the infrastructure is distributed across cloud. You've got various cloud providers, you've got private cloud, you've got on-premise infrastructure and various services within the IT. So these tools equip you to you know, cater to any kind of needs, where your digital services are, where are your footprints, how do you try to understand you know, what have you deployed in the environment, how is this service contributing and where are the infrastructures that are supporting this service sitting in. So ITOM visibility exactly does that, whatever is your issue, whether you're tackling something in the cloud, whether you're tackling something on-premise and whether it is database solutions you're looking at and whatever is your challenge, ServiceNow offers a solution within the ITOM visibility mm. to bring data into ServiceNow CMDB. Yeah, definitely. And we do tend to see that a lot when speaking to customers is there is a lot of complexity and that's increasing with a hybrid solution going into the cloud. Uh, fortunately, ServiceNow uh, Discovery uh, has the ability to reach into the cloud and hybrid uh, capability, but it's all about providing that uh, awareness into your estate so that you can make those key business decisions in the various different processes that leverage uh, the, the CMDB data that it brings in. Okay, so how can this data that we bring into the platform be used by the various different processes within the ServiceNow platform? Yeah, so we can talk about the most popular process, which is the incident. You know, you want to raise something, something is not working, and then you can do it against a CI. And then you want to make some change to say, basically, you know, you want to do a patching or you want to do some change on the server. That's when the data comes in from CMDB where you raise it against it. And the moment you pull a CI, it automatically goes and finds out what are the services and what are the other things that are hanging off this particular CI and then immediately alerts all the relevant uh, people concerned. Uh, so you get better control out of it. And then there is certificate and inventory management where you know using the CMDB, you can identify what's the certificate that's expiring immediately, you know, which could be a certificate that's sitting on an infrastructure which is contributing to your very mission critical service. And then there is firewall auditing. Again, you know, you can anytime go and query and look at the firewall policies in place in your organization and how you want to modify and make sure it is compliant. So these are some of the use cases I can think of. And it can help uh, increase successful changes, reduce mean time to resolution, prevent outages, just by having that data in the system that can be leveraged by those various different processes helps your key business stakeholders make informed decisions, which is what it comes down to. Why should customers care about ITOM visibility? I think there are top three reasons why uh, somebody should worry about ITOM visibility. One is the cost, the other one is the security, and the third one is the compliance. So 
if you don't know what you have, then you obviously can't you know, do any measurement or understand how you can reduce cost. So obviously you need to know what is the infrastructure in your organization so that you can start working on cost optimization. And then comes the security. So you need to understand you know, where, where your mission critical services are so that you, know, you can ensure that all the compliances are in place. And then that brings me on to the compliance where you know, if there is a third party audit happening in your IT infrastructure, you should be confident enough that you know, your IT infrastructure is deployed the right way, adhering to all the policies, that is regulations in place, so that your customers are happy and uh, feel okay with that services that you're going to offer for them. Yeah, really great points there. And you know, one of the things that we tend to see in the industry is, is asset management compliance as well is that you know, there's a lot of spend within software and if uh, you know, as an IT organisation you, you're not compliant with that, you could be stung with some pretty hefty fines. So being able to see what's out there is really important to make sure that you are compliant uh, and secure and stay in budget. Can you give me an example of where you've worked with a customer before uh, around implementing ITON visibility? Yeah, one example I can think of, a challenging one, is the customer had on-premise infrastructure, hosting a lot of services out of it, and then uh, they had a cloud strategy where initially you know, there was a burst of people going and procuring things from the cloud. And uh, so it was kind of went out of control and they were looking to bring it back by putting governance in place. So basically they didn't know what's the cloud presence of critical infrastructure currently. And then on top of it, they were doing a project where it is the private cloud that they were hosting and they wanted to cut cost by bringing all the services to be hosted out of private cloud. So this was a typical example where there were three different environments and ITOM visibility was the right approach for them. So we started off with discovery, understanding the on-premise infrastructure and then brought in the service mapping to start mapping all the infrastructure to the critical services. So we nailed down to the top 10 uh, CIO critical services. And then we started understanding if there is a cloud presence, something like AWS or Azure, and then try and understand how this was procured. Because there was tagging policy in place, we leveraged the tag-based discovery as well, try to understand what is present where. And then the private cloud, uh, we used the API solution, the web services, which was coming in and uh, ingesting data into CMDB. And uh, because CMDB had this IRE engine, uh, which underpins you know, how the data is consumed in CMDB. We were not worried about data being you know, coming left, right and center. We were you know, confident about how the data is populated within the CMDB and that gave us the picture to understand how these critical services are spread across these infrastructure and you know, how you can make it cost efficient you know, yeah. by doing whatever you need to do. Where does ITOM visibility sit within that ITOM journey? I think ITOM visibility should be the starting point, uh, not only ITOM specifically, but also for the platform as such. You know, you start populating CMDB, uh, not necessarily, you know, because ITOM visibility has a suit, uh, a, a range of products in it, so you don't need to, you know, do everything. So I would always say underpin with a specific business requirement. There is a, identify the problem in the business, identify you're solving something, you know, a business problem that you're solving and how can you underpin with the data. And that's when you start populating uh, the CMDB with item visibility product. So mm -hmm. you start off with something like an SCCM or Intune, it's like a plug and play, start getting the data into the platform. And then, you know, once you get the data and also have the strategy to understand, you know, who's going to manage the data, who's going to own the data mm -hmm. and get all the people involved, all the responsible process owners involved and start seeing the benefit. As you start seeing the benefit, you'll start understanding what's the requirement, you know, how are we, you know, doing the data-driven decisions and how is it helping the organization. And you start winning over a lot of processes, a lot of stakeholders, and that's when your ServiceNow platform, CMDB, gets popular, and then you start, you know, adding more to the CMDB and start managing it better. Yeah, it is truly a journey, and there's, there's some low-hanging fruit there, which, uh, you know, you can win. Um, and, and get some quick wins from. Um, the way I look at it is it's, um, to your point, foundational and that uh, I like to use the analogy of building a house is that you wouldn't put in windows and doors before you've put in the foundations of the house. So very much like building out your CMDB, you need to have foundational data before you can mature onto other areas and processes of the platform.
Thanks very much for joining me today, Mithu. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Rob. It's been an absolute pleasure.